right, all right, all right. We are cruising through this boot camp. I hope you guys are having as much fun as I am making these videos. In this one, we're gonna talk about padding. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Padding is literally the padding or a little space around each object. But in Swift UI, it is super important because we can use padding to space objects out and also push objects off of the edges. So maybe off of the edge of the screen if we want like a little indentation, a little margin. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can add padding to an object. In Swift UI, we can add padding to all four sides or just a single side, the top, bottom, left, or right of an object to really create pixel perfect screens. I'll also quickly show you guys how we can stack padding on padding to get exactly what we're looking for. All right, I am back in our Xcode project. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file for the code we're gonna do in this video. It will be a Swift UI view as always, and we're gonna talk about padding and spacing. So I'm going to call this padding and spacer bootcamp. Click create, once you get into it, click resume on the canvas to make sure it's all connected. And let's get coding. And let's start by adding a background to our text. So we'll call that background and we'll do color.blue. Now in this course so far, if we wanted the background to extend beyond uh, this text, we would have added a frame. So we would have called dot frame with maybe a width and a height of 100. Now this looks okay, but in practice, we wanna to try to avoid hard coding values like this 100 in our code. Because what happens if this hello world changed sizes and it said, hello world, this is fun. Well, the frame would still be stuck at width 100 and height 100. And that's not very dynamic. So if we wanted it to be exactly 100 by 100, fine. But if we wanted our text to expand with this, so we wanted it to look more like this, well then we obviously had to change the width. So what we can do instead of setting the frame, we can set padding around the text. So I'm gonna delete this frame. And so we're back to how our normal text looks and I'm gonna call dot padding. And now padding will add a little extra space around all four edges of the text. So you'll notice in the preview that as we change this text, the padding will automatically update because it's dynamic and it, we still have that padding around the outside. And just to give you a little more clarity on where the padding is, let's add a background before the padding. So background color dot yellow. So our text by itself is where the yellow is. And then we add padding and padding goes through around all four edges by default. And it adds a default amount, which I think is about 10. So calling this dot padding directly is the same thing as calling dot padding and we go down to the edges, we pick all, and we pick 10. So that's the exact same thing as just calling padding. This is the shorthand version, this is the longer version. And in this longer version, we can now update how much padding we want. So we could do 50, let's put it back to 10. And we can also change which sides we want the padding to go on. So by default, it's all, which is all four sides, but we could do vertical, which is only the top and the bottom, we can do horizontal, left and right, and we can do any one side. So top, uh, bottom, leading, trailing. And what's really cool about padding is that we can stack it. So if we wanted to keep this padding all 10, and then we wanted to add more padding on the left side, we could add another row. We'll add another padding, leading, and maybe 20. So now we added 10 padding on all four sides and then an extra 20 on the left side. So this left side is now 30 padding. And this is a more dynamic way to try to avoid hard coding exact frames in our views so that if the content changes, our padding is dynamic. So I wanna give you two quick real world examples of where padding can come in handy. And let's start by deleting our modifiers. So let's pretend like this hello world is the title of our app. So let's make it a font of large title, font weight of 
semi bold. And let's pretend that we want to push it to our left side. Well, we can call dot frame, and we've done this before. We'll do max width of infinity. So now the frame, and I'll, I will add a background to this frame just so you can see. Background color red. And now we want to we want to push it to the left. So we'll add the alignment to the frame of leading. Now this looks good, but of course. But of course, our text is all the way to the left edge of the phone. And if you've used pretty much any app, the text usually starts like in a little bit with a little bit of a margin before the title starts. So how do we add that margin? Well, we can add padding on the leading edge. So after this background, I will call dot padding. We'll do dot leading and we'll make it maybe 20. So now we added this padding on the left. And of course, we can comment out this background color to make it look actually like it would in a real app. And I want to show you guys one more example. So let's delete this frame and padding and background. So we just have our text in the center of the screen. And let's embed this text in a VStack. So I'm going to hold the command button, click on the text, and embed in VStack. Again, we could have typed out VStack, uh, but that shortcut is a little bit better. And below this text, let's add another text. And we'll say this is the description of what we will do on this screen. It is multiple lines and um, we will align the text to the leading edge. So by default, the text is aligned. The multi-line text alignment is leading. And that's why the text within this text, these three rows, are all aligned to the left. And we could change that to center if we wanted to center our app. But we're going to leave it leading. And because it's default, we actually don't need it. <clears throat> and then I want to align all of our text to the left side. And we have these two different text components. So what we're going to do is align them to the left. Using the VStack alignment, we will call dot leading, and that pushes them to the left. And now I want to add a background to this whole VStack. So I'm going to call dot background, and we'll do color dot red for now. Now I want some spacing between my text and the edge of this background. So instead of changing the frame on the VStack, I'm just going to add padding. So before we add this background, I will add dot padding so that it's 10 on all four sides by default and our frame updated so there's padding around the edges of the text. And just to highlight that, let's add a background before we added the padding as well. So background color dot blue. So you can see our text object is now in the center with padding on all four sides. And this looks better. But I don't want this red background to be so close to the edges of my screen. I want to give a little bit of spacing between the phone frame and this red background. So what I'll call after we add the background, I'll call dot padding edges. We'll do horizontal. So it's only the left and right. And then we'll give it another padding of 10 on the left and right. And if I add another background to this background color dot green, you'll see that that extra 10 padding is only on the left and the right side because we added horizontal. Now, this doesn't look good, but let's make it look pretty good. Let's get rid of this green. Let's get rid of this blue. So we just have the red. And let's actually change this red to white. So I'm going to put the background on multiple lines here so it's easier to read. And let's make it white. And then we can't see it very well because it's white on white. So let's add a shadow behind it. So we'll do shadow. We'll do color radius X and Y. And let's put each of these on different lines. So I'll put the press enter before color, enter before radius, and then X and Y I'll put on one line. And let's change the color from black because that's so dark. So let's do a color dot black dot opacity. So this is a way you can change the opacity on a color. And we'll just change it to 30% opacity. So it's like a light black, a light gray. And that looks a little better. And I want to move it uh, down a little bit. So the X will keep 0 and the Y will move to 10. So now it looks like it's kind of below our object. 
And of course, we don't like hard corners in our app. So let's add corner radius before the shadow. So we'll call that corner radius of 10. So this looks a little better already, like something it might be in an app. And let's add some more padding. So on the top and the bottom, I want to add more padding. So before we add the background layer, let's add another padding dot vertical. And let's set this equal to maybe 30. So then I want to add some padding between these two objects. So what I'm going to do is at the bottom of the hello world, I'm going to add padding dot bottom. And let's do maybe 20. And so now you can see how this could be a little more useful in a real world app. I'll change this to 10. So that's it for padding. You guys now have some real examples on why padding is so important, primarily because it's dynamic. And it, by using padding, we can avoid hard coding exact frames in our app, which is super useful. I know at the beginning of this video, I said we were going to cover spacers too, but this video is getting long and spacers are also important. So I'm going to actually give spacers their own video next. So that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on padding. It is very useful. And as always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you guys in the next video.